<laughs> I just got sent a gift. This is the Eco Rico scooter. This weighs about 40 pounds. Today I'm gonna unbox this for you. Hot, work up a sweat. Just opening this thing. I think this might be good for my health. Eco Rico L5. This is the plus model with the extended battery. High performance, top speed configurable, 15 to 30 miles of range, 20 to 30 percent incline, zero drag hub motor, which means you can push off and it's not gonna feel like it's resisting against you. 280 pounds, well under my weight. All set, ready to ride now. Pre-charge 50% for your convenience. Box, some card. Looks like the charger and the power cable that goes with it. And a little Allen wrench and some instructions. This is the front wheel. You gotta make sure you're not putting any pressure on this hinge over here. And then you can push this up and you can see this little pin is going to get locked to this little notch over here. Like that. And then you lock this in with this lever and we're all set. Over here is the kickstand. I'm gonna kick it, of course. Kick it. And now it will stand. For the handles, I'm only pulling it up and it just locks in place like that. You can just pull it up. This is spring loaded and then it just locks into place. Just like that. And then as I pull it up, it gets locked into this little notch. You can have it go a little bit higher with this notch and then yet a little bit higher with this notch. I think this lower one works well for me. And then you just twist this to lock. Please tighten the knob after height adjustment to secure the T-bar. And then to turn it on, just press and hold. There we go. Trip 0.1 miles. It looks like it's even fully charged. On the left over here, you got the brake and also a little ringing. Sometimes I actually do use the bell. When someone's in front of you, you gotta ring the bell. A view of the back LED brake light over here. Let me press on the brake. Pushing the brake over here, it looks like there's some sort of friction type brake, disc brake or something inside. Looking from the bottom over here, I wanna press the brake. You can see that lever turn a little bit. Good look at the bottom of the scooter. metal welded over here the hinge for these two shocks over there on the other side it looks like there's a wire for power that's going in here into the motor these tires are solid tires there's no air in it this is the kickstand over here and the charge port four pin charge port over there you can see the front wheel have dual shocks over here i'm going to jump on this thing and then you can see it it seems like i am able to bottom out on this thing if I really jump on it, you can see it bottom out a little bit. Same thing with the rear shock. Let me step on this. Here's the charge port and the charge cable. When it's not connected, it's green. Now it's red. Turn it on while it's charging. It seems like it doesn't stop you from doing it. So if you're gonna put it away, you're gonna pull this off, push this lever, come down, you open this up, and you can push this down if you want to and kind of fold this in, fold these two in and we're done. So I think less than 60 seconds. I'd say, you know, if you do it fast, maybe 30 seconds or so, you can collapse it all. So I'm gonna lift this up. This is kind of hefty. You definitely don't want to haul this for a block. You don't want to haul this anywhere really. And if you're gonna do the reverse, I guess you just kind of open these up Pull it down, I'm gonna push this, fold it over, and uh, we're off we go. Okay, I'm back. I uh, expended the whole battery. It's basically empty right now. And this led me to do 22.1 miles total. So some thoughts on this, I went over four overpasses total. 
They're not particularly super steep, they're pretty average. So you can see 22.1 miles divided by five bars, you get about 4.4 uh, miles for every single bar. I did run over a rock accidentally that was about, I don't know, an inch and a half or two inches diameter. And this is just a piece of cement or something. And it just kind of kicked it aside and I almost fell over, but then, you know, it just kind of made it a little rocky. I'm glad I didn't fall over, but it's great that the wheels did not get punctured or anything. It just kind of impacted it. I checked the tires, they were okay. A little note about the speed of this thing, it was able to obtain 25 miles an hour, at least from the speedometer that it's saying. On the first four bars, it can do all this just fine. But when it's on the last bar, it has a hard time obtaining this 25 mile an hour. Um, on a flat road, it was only able to do 22. And towards the very, very end, it was, you know, it was cutting in and out. And you can kind of tell that, oh, you know, it's, it's almost going to be dead and it can only go about 15 miles an hour. Little thought about the stability of this thing. It feels that you need to be slightly tense in order to keep the wheel straight. It's only because it's a scooter. It has small wheels. Therefore, um, you need a little bit more torque in order to keep it straight. What I notice about this platform is that if you touch it, it's actually kind of smooth. So I would highly recommend putting some sort of I don't know, skateboard sandpaper thing so that you would uh, grip this better because when I was riding this thing, I can totally feel that it's kind of slipping around a little bit. So I'm surprised that they did not um, pre-put something, some sort of skateboard um, sandpaper thing, you know, just stuck on here. Some thoughts about this throttle is that most of the time you're going to have your arm like this and you're going to have your index finger trying to make the speed control over here. So you can see the end of my hand, it's already at the edge of this thing. So if your hand is any bigger, it's gonna be like kind of falling off the side and this won't be too comfortable. For me, I feel like if I put my handle right here, it would be more comfortable. So if the throttle was kind of pushed in over here a little bit, um, it would have been more ergonomic. And I kind of wish the throttle is a little further in so that when it's fully depressed, it's a little bit closer to this handlebar so you can get closer to like a full grip just like this and then go full speed. So I think this brake thing is actually the drum brake. When you let go of the throttle and don't actually do a real brake, that's when the regenerative thing happened. If you're just kind of rolling downhill without braking, then the motor is kind of spinning and it's recharging your batteries back. I'm gonna plug the charger back in over here and uh, the red light is on. So that's all for my thoughts on it. Thanks for watching.